Hi, I'm Dr. Kirtley Jones from the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. And as you are getting ready to put together your topics in medicine presentation, I'd like to remind you of the three goals for topics in medicine and OBGYN. The primary goal is for you to become more facile at searching the electronic media for clinical data, for research, and patient information as you try to solve clinical problems. This is really important when you're in a very fast-paced uh, environment like a clinic that you can get answers in a pretty rapid fashion. The second goal is um, for you to teach each other some of the 25 top topics in a case-based fashion. And the third goal is for you to practice the 10-minute teaching moment. Um, when you are out there either in the clinic or when you're presenting your research at a national meeting, unless you're the plenary speaker and the most important person on the planet, you get 10 minutes. So you should learn how to present information in a usable way to people in 10 minutes. Now remember you're going to be evaluated by an APGAR score. This is not the score that was devised by Virginia APGAR to evaluate newborns that's used in OBGYN around the world. This is actually a devised score for your presentation. It will be 10 points and you will get zero to two points in each of five domains. I'm gonna go over those with you. A is for attitude. You shouldn't be boring. If you are presenting information or discussing things with the patient and you're not interested and connected, they're not listening either. And remember, you're being evaluated by your most difficult audience, and that's not me or my faculty, it's your peers. So you have to express that you're interested in your topic. How you do that is up to you. You have to be a little careful with humor in OBGYN because not everyone in the audience is gonna consider that what you think is funny is funny, and sometimes it may even be inappropriate. But humor, passion, graphics are all ways to engage your audience. And you may want to take one minute or so to introduce your topic. P is for presentation. You should be organized. Tell them what you tell them, what you're going to tell them. Tell them, and then tell them what you told them. It's best if you give an overview and take one or two minutes about the so for instance, if your topic is postpartum hemorrhage and you have a clinical problem in that domain, you might take a minute or two to overview what are the causes of postpartum hemorrhage so your audience can actually put this case in the framework of a differential diagnosis. So you should be uh, organized. You should give them an overview of what your topic background is. And this should take just a minute or two, but be organized. G is for general approach to the search. Now, if you don't know anything about the topic, it's okay to start with up-to-date uh, or some other pre-digested medical information. However, I expect more from you. I expect you to go to the raw literature, or not the raw literature, but the published literature, and actually find the best information that fits your case. So in each one of your clinical scenarios, there are several questions. So you may have to look through a literature, not an extensive literature search, but you should be able to pick out what are the most important research papers that actually answer the questions that you're going to be um, giving to your audience and that you're going to be solving for them. So I want, we want to see where you've been. Now, this is not a presentation about search techniques. It's about solving the problem but when you actually present your graphics or you present your information, we want to know where you've been. So um, G is for general approach to the search. Uh, sometimes it's going to be you're lucky and you pick a question that has many multiple um, randomized trials and good for you. Sometimes it will be retro uh, retrospective case control series, and sometimes it'll just be a case series. So part of judgment in medicine is taking the evidence that we've got, the best evidence we've got, to try to solve a problem. So some of the cases will have kind of hard searches, and some will be pretty easy for you. And I'm not telling you in advance which one's which. So, Now, remember that you're going to present the data in a way that's usable. And that means a picture is worth a thousand words. If you put up a table with a lot of numbers, there is a lot of evidence that people don't remember the gist of what you're telling them. They may remember a specific number, but they don't 
remember the overall importance of what you're saying. So bar graphs or pictographs can be very useful in getting your information across that you want to share. A is for the answer. You've got to an answer, and each case often has several questions. So you have to answer them all. It should be evidence-based, and the information must be in ways your students and your patients can understand. So giving information in terms of relative risk is not useful to the students or the patients. It's only useful to epidemiologists. So relative risk isn't useful, or terms like there's an increase or decreased risk. We need some real numbers in numbers that people can use. So what people can use is absolute risk or attributable risk. For example, the inc there's an increased, two times increased risk, two to three times increased risk of blood clots in women who take combination birth control pills for, compared to women who don't take birth control pills. That doesn't give anyone a real number that they can understand. A two to three times increased risk sounds pretty scary. The real numbers are baseline risk, one to two per 10,000 women per year in the population who take birth control pills, and the, uh, the risk of women taking birth control pills is, is four to six. So although that's a two to three times increased risk, the absolute or attributable risk might be two to four per 10,000 women per year. So you need some real numbers, and relative risk or using numbers like greater or smaller aren't gonna really give people numbers that they can use. So we need answers in numbers that people can use. And lastly, you should round up. So the giving the answer should take a minute or two, and round up should take less than a minute. All of these are important because in your roundup, you need to give people the information that answers the questions, and hopefully they will be able, your audience, which are your peers, should be able to give three um, things that they learned during your presentation. So round up so they can consolidate their knowledge. And you will be asked to find and present either in paper form or at least give us electronically um, a patient information sheet that you would be able to give to a patient if you were in a clinic. So R is for review or round up, and that includes being able to um, send us to a site which would be a good patient information source. So 10 minutes. After 12 minutes, uh, I start taking off points, and at 15 minutes, you have to stop. So be prepared. You should practice this a little bit in advance so that you know that you're going to finish on time. This is 10 minutes, and you will be timed, and you will get points off if you go over 12 minutes. Now, if you do it in eight minutes, good for you. If you do it in five minutes, you could have used your time a little bit better and given us a little more information. So. Um, Remember, 10 minutes is part of the goal, so you should practice that. Remember, this is your presentation. It's not ours, so don't come to us and say, should I do this or that, because I want you to do it in the way that you think uh, presents the case and the answers in the way that works for you. So bring your energy and your enthusiasm to the project, and you'll do a great job. Thanks.